Hi, welcome to the 30th Hammer Tutorial. Some of you might have noticed that this got put up and then taken down. The reason for that was there was some distortion at the end. And I kind of felt like I cheated you guys out of uh, some knowledge about the 3D Skybox. So I'm here to right that little wrong and give you as much information as possible on this subject. So, the first thing that we're going to do, go over how to make the 3D Skybox. Right now, all I have is just a small little test level that's nothing really special. It's just four walls surrounded by the skybox on top. So, for this to work properly, you do have to have the skybox surrounding your map, but make sure you build the skybox correctly. Don't just put a box around your map. That's a very bad way to make your skybox. So, the, other w the next part is the actual construction of the 3D skybox. What you want to do is make a box typically a square this is not going to be nearly as big as your actual main map but because I have such a small main area I'm gonna make it relatively big so I like to make mine a perfect square and then after you make it you want to hollow it out so to do that you just press Control H and then it'll pop up with the window. 32 is the default and that's it's good enough. So come over here to your 3D view. And now you just want to leave this whole thing skybox. Now you want to create one entity and you want this to be sky camera. Click apply and you usually just want to throw this right in the middle of your your second big box of skybox here. What this does, the sky camera represents your map in the 3D skybox view. And typically when you make a 3D skybox, you just want to put it off to the side of your map where no one can get to it that easily or way above. Just don't put it below because sometimes that can cause errors. So, you open up your 3D skybox, you can leave pitch y'all roll perfectly fine unless you want to change that. I've never experimented with it, but I'm assuming it just rotates what's in your 3D skybox. The 3D skybox scale, 16. What this means is whatever is in here will be scaled up 16 times around the map. So you want to keep whatever's in here relatively small. So let's keep that in mind. 16 is usually good enough. Fog enabled. You typically want this because otherwise it won't give as good of an effect of a sky because typically when you're in the skybox you're looking at stuff that's going to be very far away. And if you have fog on it, it makes it look like it's even more distant because in real life, when you look away from something really far away, it starts to fog out. So you usually just want to keep that enabled. The fog blend is really your choice. And if you're ever wondering about anything, you can click help or go to the developer wiki page. And use angles for fog direction. I usually just leave that at no. The primary fog color. This is the main thing that you want to change if you're doing fog. I like to do kind of a tealish with a gray. You just kind of choose your color and click apply. And if fog blends enabled, it will blend the two colors together. And if you want a secondary fog color, that's the other color that it will blend. I typically just use one fog color and that's it. For primary fog direction or dir, you just leave that stock will do wonders for you. The fog start. This one's important. The lower the number, the closer to your map that it will start to enable fog. And the end fog is the end point of where it will fully fog out everything. Anywhere in between there is a transition too and it'll slowly fade out. So I like around 15,000, uh, 1500. And for my fog end, usually, surprisingly, around 15,000. But I'm feeling adventurous, and I'll go with 9,000. So you can fiddle with that as much as you want. Just throw your map in like a fast compile and just keep compiling it to see how your fog looks. Now, a common mistake that people do is they put a light environment inside their 3D skybox. This will do nothing. When you compile your map, it uses the very first light environment that was placed any other ones it renders as obsolete and doesn't even touch them if you put an NV cube map in there you can do that but again not very practical you're not going over there you won't see the reflections you can just forget the NV cube map 
So now you actually have to put stuff in here for it to do something. The most common thing to do is mountains. They work fine and they're perfect to do. You can do that with displacements. There will be a displacement tutorial coming up soon. I'll show you how to do that. But for our sake, we're just going to do some brushwork and some basic models. So if you create an entity and make it a prop static, click browse, of course, and then usually if you do a search for building, it'll come up with some random windows and crap. But you'll see that there are some things to the grid that are like a full building that's really, really big compared to the grid. Like this one, this is a factory. So if you click OK and apply, you'll notice that this factory is pretty ginormous. And you want to make sure that you look around in your, in your view sometimes because usually they no draw a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to place this in my 3D skybox in an area that... I think it'll look decent. And whenever you place a model in your 3D skybox, there's one thing that you always want to do. You want to make sure shadows are disabled, because otherwise when your lighting gets rendered, it will most likely mess up your map. So you just want to go to disable shadows, yes. And another good model to do, you can also do a search for skybox, and sometimes if you have some models that you've downloaded, you'll have trees in there. I believe Valve comes with some, and you also notice that there's just random things that you can do for the skybox. There's called clouds. You'll notice in, I do believe, CS Office. Yeah, CS Office, Port, and Tides. There are 3D scout clouds in the skybox that are animated. So basically, all these are they're just a dome model that you place in your 3D skybox and it gives the effect of clouds. There's a couple different ones depending on your skybox size. It doesn't you're not constricted to a small 3D skybox area, but you don't want to go too overboard with it cuz it does render visibility and everything else in your 3D skybox too. So just don't go crazy. So I'm going to keep that in there. And now we're going to do some brushwork. Now for this, you want to make sure you have no draw enabled. And you only want to texture the faces that can be seen. Check the comment description. There will be a link where you can download some prefabs that I've made of just buildings for the 3D skybox. But I'm going to show you how to make some on your own. So there's two things that you can type in to get skybox materials. And that's gen. I don't know why they chose gen, but you'll see if you look at gen, there's a whole bunch of what looks like skyscrapers that are really really small textures so if you just pick one of those apply no draw I'm just gonna do a really quick one right here 